Daisy Woodworks for you. Check it out. This is part two of the medicine cabinet build. Now, please keep in mind the uh, editing process due to all the the jumping around we did with the last week with a family member passing away. It kind of threw everything off, so it does seem a tad chaotic. Um, I do apologize. I hope you still can enjoy the video and get the most out of it and hopefully inspire you to go ahead and build one of your own. So, without any further ado, it starts just right at the table saw, so get watching. My blade is raised up just above the workpiece height or thickness and my fence is set at three and a half and these will be the outer perimeter of the box. Now again, I don't have my planer. I'm using old crappy stock that I wouldn't normally be able to use on anything else. So, this board is very inconsistent. I think it's about a half inch down this end and just about seven eighths or so at this end. So. With the planer, you're going to have to do the same kind of thing as the baseboard build, which you haven't seen yet because I haven't released it yet. Mostly because it's not finished yet. Yes, but now you know about it, and now I have to kill you. Or not. You can just subscribe and wait for it to come. Yeah, let's do that. So, let's cut our three and a halves. Okay, so three and a half inches now. Let's do the same to the second board. And then we can go on and cut our things. You know what I'm saying? I really, 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 so we're all set up to cut the rabbits on the very end of our work pieces. Okay, so I haven't done a test piece. I've lowered it just below a quarter inch. I'll make a pass, measure the depth of the cut, and if I have to make any adjustments, then I'll raise it up a tad till I get it where I want, and then I'll do the remainder of my cuts. You can see we're actually dead on a quarter of an inch. Okay, so you can see how this is going to work. We have our rabbit joint here, which keep in mind, you can do this on the router. I just figured for these couple cuts, I might as well just do it on the table saw. So this is just going to sit down, and this sits nice and flush. It's not proud on any anywhere, and it will give us a nice strong joint once it's glued. Okay, so now we're going on to the shelf dados. Again, quarter inch... Uh, Deep, just like our rabbits up here and again you can do this on the rotor table I have measured equal distance through I have seven and three quarters of an inch here and then my half inch um, shelf because the shelves are gonna be the same material as the box itself so this will be all bored out a quarter inch in and then our shelves will slide into it we'll do the same thing on both sides and you'll get the picture better once we actually kind of put everything in together Check it out, look what we got. We got us the very middle stage, roughly, of the vanity mirror. So as you can see, we have our dado grooves here with our shelves. Simple, simple construction. These are nothing more than a board cut at the proper length to fit into these grooves. And these grooves, the dados, are nothing more than a shallow cut. Instead of cutting all the way through the board, you're only cutting halfway through the board and you just make repetitive passes until you have the desired width. We have our rabbit joints here for the corners. It connects these side rails to the top and bottom rails. And right now I've got my uh, picture frame strap on it. Just holding it together so you can see. And then we're just gonna glue everything together, so. Okay, so pretty simple glue up. We go to our rabbit joints. Make sure we apply a good amount of glue. Make sure you get it through the entire joint so that you get maximum contact with your wood. Now to clamp this up I'm going to use my 
picture frame clamp here. But you can just as easily just use F clamps or parallel clamps or whatever kind of clamps you have. Okay, so I ran it through the rotor. Our shelves are going to sit like this, so this will be the top. See our bottom edge here has the nice curvature. So now all that's left is to round over this top edge here. And then once the case itself is dry, we can uh, do the same process to it. I have gone over this with 150 grit sandpaper and then 220. Um, I took a piece of sandpaper here, 220 just to get in the little grooves here a tad to help clean them up. Okay, so we are about to take this box out of the clamping. It's probably been about three hours almost, roughly, kind of, maybe. As you can see, we have our box and our slots here for our shelving. So now we can actually now this is one of my favorite the router, parts, it's like opening a on. Christmas present okay, on so Christmas morning. Okay, now I am just going to kind of chamfer the inside, ed well sorry, inside edge here. Basically, I will turn my router on and just run my bearing around like that all the way around. Now one thing to keep in mind with these grooves, you want to be very careful that you don't drop your bearing straight into one of those holes because it will gouge right in. So take your time, um, even skip over it until you put a, maybe you can set a fence up behind for these, just these areas here, you know, whatever you can do to ensure that you get a proper cut, do it. So we've got it mocked up here. Now, their hinges aren't on yet, but when it opens up, it'll look like this. I think I'm going to throw, I have some of that quarter inch oak plywood left, I think I'm going to throw some behind here. Gonna cover up that ugly brown that is the back of the mirror. Looks pretty good, our shelves with the uh, profile on them. Um, I've got the profile routed on the edge of the box itself. Looks pretty, pretty nice. Also, we have the slight round over on the inside of the box. And the oak panel on the back. If you look at it here and see the grain structure, it is quite quite similar to the ash. Show you the hardware. Now because I didn't think ahead, I thought I was able to get a 20 or 18 inch uh, piano hinge. Turns out I can't. Probably could if I ordered one online. Closest I had was 24 and the inside of this box, well, it's too short. The, I have these little hinges here. There's four of them so I'll probably do one two, three, four, something like that, and uh, I'll inset them right into the wood. Oh, look at this! Hinge, hinge, hinge. I just ended up going with these tiny little hinges. Um, we didn't want them to show, we didn't want them to clash and so forth, so for the most part they'll be hidden except for when you open it up, you'll see them. Um, they are flush, so they are actually... Um, embedded into the top rail here. So what I'm doing is I have it marked here. I'll take a chisel and I will take that down to the desired depth which is about a uh, sixteenth-ish. Um, then also we have this little magnet which will catch the door when it's closed. You can see there's the plate that goes on the door itself. And then we have our little handle here that is used to open the door obviously. So let's get cracking. Okay, so first thing we do is do our outline. Try to keep it as straight as possible, and the beveled side is facing in so that it pushes itself out towards the line and not out too far. So it fits pretty good. Though I think we can go make it a tad deeper. And that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to mark where the screw holes are. 
and then I will pre-drill them. That looks pretty good. So there you go. Now it is in there just right. Don't do what I'm doing. Don't use an impact driver. Uh, chances are you're going to break a screw. I had to because my screwdriver seemed to have upped and walked out of my shop. So don't do what I'm doing. Use a screwdriver. Okay, so you saw me just put the screws, the final screws in the hinges. As you can see, voila, it is a cabinet almost. So I got this all lined up exactly where it needs to be. I did end up putting some screws in here because I actually uh, I decided that maybe it was best just to put a little extra strength in it. So drilled some small holes, uh, put some very small screws in, and it drilled a shallow hole on top of the pile hole that these plugs fit into. So that you won't see the screws, you'll just see these, which are oak and will go with the ash because they are very close in color and grain structure. So now we are going to, we'll put the shelves in. Keep in mind our shelves have to slide in first because we have these cherry stop blocks right here that will stop the shelves from coming out. So as you can see, shelves are in, our door here swings like it's supposed to, um, so now we're going to put the back on. Remember to put your grain facing in if you're doing this, because this is what you're going to see, this is what you want to see. It'd be nice to have a nail gun for this. <clears throat> I'll mark where these are, then we'll be able to throw a, a few nails in the shelves as well. Okay, so while that is drying, and I didn't think ahead because I can't find my finishing nails, and I should have probably found them before I put the glue on, so I applied a bunch of clamps and some coals to apply even pressure. But once that's dry, hopefully I'll have something to uh, secure it with. Um, and that's basically it. That I mean. Once that's done, we'll do a cool little shot of what it looks like, and it's a ready to go and be a medicine cabinet in my parents' bathroom. With that, it's going to be stained. And it's going to be stained in, in ebony. <laughs> To put the handle on, I've got it marked out where I want it. This one has two bolts, so I'm just going to, well, drill the holes and then run the bolts through. And then we will put our magnetic magnetic latch on for the inside to latch it shut. So. This mirror has been Brooklyn approved. Sissy approved. <laughs> this sissy? Uh, <laughs> this build has been Brooklyn approved. <laughs> okay, so thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope this has inspired you to go and build one of your own, or at least to go get working with some wood. Now, check us out on Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any of the upcoming builds. We have some very cool ones coming up, so stay tuned. Stay frosty. I'll see you later.